Hello, and thanks for watching. I'm going to take a quick look at a bit of software called JoinFS, which can be used to connect X-Plane, FSX, and P3D together online for group flying. An internet search for JoinFS takes you to the developer's website. Follow the links to download and install. It's pretty straightforward. And then there's a bit of setting up to do. When you open it for the first time, Windows Firewall will ask you if you want to give it permission to access the internet, and obviously you do, yes. And then you'll notice there are two large red buttons. The one on the left shows the status for connecting to your simulator. The one on the right is connecting to the network. Mine's showing red at the moment because I don't have my simulator open. So I'm going to open that up. And then when I click on the left button, JoinFS needs to do some housekeeping first. It needs to know what model aircraft you want displayed if it can't show you exactly the correct model. So it'll run through all the default models in the simulator and you choose the one that you want from the drop down menus. For the default single prop aircraft, I'm happy with the Cessna 172, so I'm going to leave that. But for the twin prop, I want something like a Baron 58. So I'm going to choose that in the drop down menus and OK it. And so on for the rest of the selections. I won't bother showing them here. Once you've chosen your selections and OK'd it, the simulator button will turn green. Next, go to File and Settings. Choose a nickname for yourself, which will do, be displayed in the list of aircraft and users. If you're an X-Plane user, you need to tick the box there. And I believe you have to click here to install a plugin. I gather that in X-Plane, you can only have one plugin running at a time. So if you're using JoinFS, you can't use any others. Then in File, Scan for models. Make sure you've got aircraft and rotorcraft ticked. And you might like to have boats ticked as well for some um, aircraft carrier sharing activities. And then click Scan. It runs through to find what models you have in your simulator. And obviously in your simulator, you'll only be able to see those models displayed. So if someone else is using something different, JoinFS will represent it as one of the default models that you chose at the beginning. So you'll see something roughly similar to what they're seeing. The next thing is to get connected to the internet. And there are a number of public hubs set up that you can connect to. Click on View Hubs to see the menu. All the ones in green are available to you and the users are shown next to it how many there are. So let's connect to the Russia hub and our network button turns green to show that we're connected. So if you and your friends connect to one of these public hubs, you'll be able to see each other in the simulators. You can look to see what aircraft are connected to each hub by choosing view and aircraft. It shows you the uh, nickname of the owner and it shows you how far away they are from your aircraft's position. It's being shown orange there because my simulator is it's on but my aircraft isn't spawned anywhere. So it doesn't know exactly how far away it is. It might be that you belong to a virtual flying club and they have their own server or hub for JoinFS. And in which case they'll supply you with some numbers. In the join box, type those numbers in and click join and your network button should turn green. It's turned orange here because I've put in numbers that don't actually exist. When you're connected to one of these more private hubs, you will only be able to see the aircraft 
that belong to that club, so it avoids any problems with other aircraft trying to use the same airfield. If you do have access to one of these private hubs, you'll probably want to make a bookmark for it so JoinFS remembers it each time. Click on View and Bookmarks, then Add, give it a name, and type in the numbers that you were given in the address bar, then OK it. Then you can click Join in the bookmarks, but it will also appear in the drop-down menu next to the Join box in the main window. This isn't showing up green because I've put in numbers that don't exist. And then there is just one last thing to tell you about. If you're using FSX or P3D, the developer recommends that you reduce your frames per second to no more than 35. And this is because if you have higher than that, the aircraft can be seen to judder around. So here I am coming up on my friend's aircraft. I've got unlimited frames per second, which is giving me about 90 or so. Uh, a bit low, sorry, hang on. Just stick my head up through the sunroof. As I get closer, you can see it juddering around. A bit of glare from the sun, sorry. So now I'm going to change the target frame rate down. I normally have it at 30. And when I run that, things will look much better. Here I am coming up on my friend again. As I get close, the other aircraft is displayed quite smoothly. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.